Welcome. Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Pod with Vadim Peskov. He's CEO and co-founder at Difco. They build and scale your business fast uh, with their world-class senior developers. So we're definitely going to talk about that today. He's also an advisor at Alchemist. So if we're lucky, we're going to talk about incubators, about accelerators. Vadim is in uh, San Francisco. And yeah, it's a nice opportunity, I guess, to talk about Silicon Valley, what's up in SF, uh, in the AI world and everything between. This podcast is brought to you by podfire.com. If you want to start scale, be invited to podcast or monetize your own podcast. You can go to podfire.com for that. Vadim, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and Difco. Okay. Um, first of all, thanks for inviting. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so it's a... Uh... It's a lot of things that are happening in current in the world, but in general, so I can say that uh, <clears throat> uh, quickly about me. So it's um, I'm running the business for the last 15 years, uh, focusing a lot right now on uh, better customer success and uh, an actual like uh, AI uh, deliverables and do a lot of interesting stuff. I think I'm sure we will talk about this in a minute. Uh, but uh, beside this, it's uh, uh, for the uh, company itself again. So it's focusing a lot in uh, delivering complex type of products, um, uh, sometimes in AI, sometimes in uh, basically B2B SaaS uh, space. So making sure that uh, complex product get delivered. So it's simple as it gets. And what are you up to nowadays? What are your top goals for this year? What is what? What are your top goals for this year? Oh, okay. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, top goals for this year. I mean, uh, in reality, it's... Uh, uh, so we plan to grow uh, three times at least uh, this year. And uh, uh, we're planning to uh, definitely expand our AI operations. Uh, currently for the projects, uh, we sometimes uh, write in all around, I would say, 30% with AI. Uh, and like accelerating a lot of development with AI right now. But our goal is to eliminate uh, more um, uh, work that could be done by AI. So let's say testing, our goal there is 80%. So push everything in terms of testing to AI, basically almost everything, just managing the process. And uh, for the development, again, our goal is to push it to 50%. So 50% of code that we will be delivering, hopefully by end of the year, will be um with ai help because again we can accelerate this uh in the right terms again not for every project is possible sure but in some cases i think uh this is uh quite uh, a success story seems that you're also a student of human psychology and potentially a jedi of the mind uh what uh psychological hurdles have you faced in the past couple of years as a founder and how have you replaced these with your new mental model? Oh, uh, you like to ask uh, right questions. I like this. So uh, to be specific, I think um, the last couple of years, I think, is definitely an interesting change. Yeah? So we went through a lot of lockdowns, COVID type of stuff. And again, depending on location of your listeners, they may experience this differently. In our case in California, it was absolutely uh, crazy in this case. Um, still sometimes. Uh, so I think uh, a lot of things changed because of this. And uh, <clears throat> the mentality of the sales is completely changed because previously we had in-person meetings. We flew to the meetings, etc. Again, like for the last year, okay, so it's coming back, but it's really, really slow. And people still have a mentality, Zoom first, meeting second. And I think this is really changing how relationship is built. And I think... Now than ever, like making things personal is much more important than it was uh, before COVID because we take this for granted. And 2018 was like, okay, person, person meeting. But now if someone flew to you, it's like, yeah, this is important. <laughs> and I think this is changing a lot of things in terms of uh, how this story is played. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that's true. My case, I've met a lot of friends through this podcast. They became clients. And then I finally get to meet them in one week from now in Montreal in a physical mastermind. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a nice funnel. And you're, you're right. Like if someone flies to you, it's a lot of their time. They probably sacrifice one entire day to be there. So, yeah, very true. What about um, 
for example, I saw that you read The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Do you feel that you were giving too much fucks before? You were probably focusing uh, too much on pleasing some people or just solving problems that didn't need to be solved? What did you learn out of that book? I, that's a wonderful question. So <laughs> um, I love this book. I, I think this is, <clears throat> again, um, from a lot of business books in general that I read through the years, and it's probably like 50 plus uh, for the last like four years or something. Uh, and some of them, again, was like classic business type of things. And it's like you like so start reading this and it's kind of like a mantra. You need to believe in X that will, everything will happen. I was like, okay. The truth is, I think this is book is a little bit different there. And I think it's one that actually worth reading, to be honest. And the reason is, yeah, so you're right. Like we actually give in too many um, worries about what is going on in, in this world. And I think... Um, it's not only about uh, like having the problems in terms of like uh, focusing on one thing specifically, but also again, just you get distracted because like one thing, another thing, you have some uh, family stuff, you worry about this, you worry about some coworker doing something and you, you don't trust yourself in, in some cases. So I think like rethinking your mental model and like thinking like, what do you actually need to focus on and where you need to put your attention. This is, I think, the key component because I like put a list in terms of things that I was doing and like was like, wonderful. Now I can cut like 80% of things there because it's like, it's useless. And like, again, this was like a really tough exercise to do because like, I was like, no, 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 it's important, important. But like in reality, when I dive deep into things, I was like, no, it's not. And focusing on what is right is actually allowing you to be successful uh, in terms of the deliveries for the, uh, anything that you want to do in life. So when fires are burning in this world and there's stuff like uh, Israel and Hamas or uh, Ukraine and Russia, should we not give these things attention or should we be stoic and focus on what we can change uh, instead of focusing our attention on the drama like what's your mental model when it comes oh that's it's really the good one uh, again so um i think like again a lot of things will happen beside these two words um that devastating but the point is if you spend a lot of attention there you get in, in a spiral there really really easy and it's not really allowing you to be yourself and you live in life of others. In in reality, again, I cannot do anything about this worse. Like I'm not a politician, not planning to be a politician at all. Uh, and I saw a lot of uh again people that like spend a lot of the energy with this. And again, maybe it's important for them, but like for me, to be honest, again, I see this and I'm trying to just path through wherever is coming there. Because again, yeah, I'm I don't want to react in all of these things because it doesn't really give me anything that's important. Yeah, I like I care about these people. I have uh, uh, some parents in uh, some of these countries, and uh, I know that it's problematic in this case. But in the same term, I want to focus on what is important for me because again, if I cannot do some immediate help, reading CNN or like wherever doesn't really allow me to be myself. And really, again, um, I will be just constantly worried about things there that, again, I cannot change. And this worry, it actually doesn't really help me at all. It's creating more problem than creating any benefit for anyone. You are a pilot, you love flying. Uh, how do you take these these views and uh, flying lessons of yours, how do you take that and transit uh, these insights into your startups? We did a startup um, in 2017, 2016, um, that uh, was uh, focused on general aviation. It was an interesting story. Unfortunately, we closed this. 
adjust due to the, the market and it's really not like really sufficient in, in this market. It's a still kind of like a old school uh, market uh, in this term. I mean, the general aviation, the commercial is, is different, but uh, the general is, is a little bit old school, I would say. Um, they will prefer use facts until it will break basically. So it's um, uh, how the simple ways to describe this. I think the flying for me is a type of meditation, to be honest. It's uh, just a way to disconnect. You like 100% on focusing on like what you do when you fly. And it's just like a way of like actually being in a moment. Because like if you're taking off, you're flying, et cetera, you don't really care about like what is going on there on the ground. You care about what is going on with you in a plane, about the plane, about uh, airflow and everything. But like not like what is happening there, and I think it's the right way to disconnect because again, uh, for me it's uh, not a silent retreat obviously, but uh, it's a way for me to really reset myself. It's like okay, now I can focus on things that is important, the versus like spending time worrying about things, and it's a kind of reset button for me. Hey, let's focus on flying, let's have fun, and let's come back to the things that we need to do for our work and life when we land. What's up in SF on the AI scene of things? Um, yeah, what's what's developing in SF? I mean, SF is uh, kind of like, uh, obviously trying to be the capital of uh, AI now, and uh, it's uh, probably more AI events uh, and startups happening in SF than, um, actually anything else <laughs> um so it's a it's a lot of activity obviously and a lot of hackathons etc i love this kind of like uh view how this actually uh pushing uh the actual like uh community here because like uh before we, we had this uh waves of like hypes yeah so we had like a crypto for hype we had a nft hype previously and it was fine but like again a lot of things in terms of crypto is kind of like obviously a little bit scammy and uh, again a lot of these projects is different again ai projects again people actually focus on business things this is what i like and i think this is great when they they do focus on business things and a lot of these uh models is allowing uh, us to be uh, really like uh, pushing things to the boundaries and explore new things and i think this is wonderful um, so a lot of events, a lot of, uh, people like really care about this and like on wherever meeting you go and like, uh, even if it's not for AI, even if it's kid's birthday, you will be talking about AI. So it's as simple as it gets. Um, so I think this is the, uh, actual like push, uh, to the, uh, new, um, options to find, uh, new interesting models, uh, how the things will work. And uh, new implementation, because again, I think we can do as a society, we can do a lot of this AI and in different terms that not completely uh, uh, like exist now. I think we can replace a lot of um, jobs that are like useless in terms of like they could be automated. We shouldn't spend as a society time to, the, uh, to do these jobs. And I think this would be right for the human uh, race in general. I um, I'm checking your your Twitter feed here, and you often post about UI and UX. So, what's the importance of, of modern UI and UX into growing a startup to scale? So, in terms of the UI, I think UI and UX is is two important things uh, for the building startups, and I think. Uh, like for the last 10 years, we see a lot of interface kind of like standardized. Yeah, so it's a lot of good framework that in place uh, that we can utilize um, as a development uh, teams. And this is like allowing us to simplify things. But in the same term, again, the basic logic is still implies. So I think like really uh, not just like taking a framework and implying this, but really thinking through the user flow is what is actually allowing uh, us to be really successful in terms of like building the product because when you dive into why people will click here versus here is two different 
uh, flows. And again, you need to understand why. And you need to sometimes, again, make assumptions, run the analytics, and see how this will, will go. Because in real life, people will do dumb things in terms of the interfaces. And after they will be like, hey, it's uh, why we have a slow conversion there? So let's say people will not allow copy-paste to uh, credit card forms because they want to protect from the fraud. But like in reality, a lot of people already have a refilled uh, credit card with their password managers, browsers, or whatever. And by doing this, you basically put in the limits to them and uh, they need to manually input this. Again, doesn't really add security, but as example, again, it will reduce the conversion for sure. So making sure that you really understand uh, the why behind uh, each action that you took for the UI, I think it's uh, is really crucial. How do you make sure to give good advice at a startup? So to a startup that is, you're an advisor at, at Alchemist, which is one of my favorite um, incubator or slash accelerator. I haven't dove deep in, in the program, but how do you give a, a startup good advice uh, specifically if you haven't done like what they're trying to build? Like how do you make sure to give advice that is actionable for them? Uh, so in terms of like finding the right advice here, I think in a lot of cases, in the case of accelerators, um, uh, startups will come and ask specific questions. Like, hey, we have this problem, how to fix it? So in this case, it's a little bit easier from one perspective because we can just directly have a conversation about what the problem is. Uh, in the same time, in a lot of cases, uh, this uh, this issue that they're coming from is not the issue that they actually need to solve. So sometimes this is, they think that they have issue with, um, let's say, again, onboarding for the users, but in reality, they have uh, an issue with a, uh, uh, maybe again, some uh, part of the product or some pricing model or something. So I think in reality, when you do any kind of advisory, you need to really understand what is going on with with the company, and like really not only by like visual things that you can find publicly, etc., and uh, by roadmaps. I think this is a key to actually have a conversation with the folks inside. So let's say it could be uh, someone. Um, on C levels, uh, if it's startups, so it may be again uh, CTOs, uh, CEOs, or um, some VP of uh, engineer or someone uh, that actually knows what is going on. Really understanding their motive and really understanding how they see this is, I think, crucial because in a lot of cases they will be focusing on um, technology, but not on a user. And they will be like, yeah, let's build it using this great technology. And it will solve us all problem. Well, let's add AI and it will solve us all problems. The truth is not true. Users in a lot of cases doesn't need AI. And startup will like, yeah, we need AI because this will definitely will help. But like again, really understand what the technology will can bring and what users need is the keys to success in any of these startups. Radim, thank you for the knowledge you've dropped today. Where can people find out more about you? Sure. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, Twitter by Dean Peskov uh, and uh, also again LinkedIn, uh, same name. Um, uh, company name is Divka, divka.us. Uh, so this uh, uh, is uh, our primary business. Um, and if you have any questions regarding the like startup advisory or anything like this or Alchemist or any other startup programs, feel free to just email me uh, or uh, LinkedIn me. I think this is uh, will be a good option as well.